people are always welcome here. I like to let them know without bringing things as well, which means you don't, there's not always required donations for them just to stop by and say hi or come by and um, help cook a meal or prepare a meal with the stuff that we already have. So like kind of just a cook night where we tend to grill a lot as well too. So um, we usually try to invite families and stuff like that to kind of you know, not not just expose anybody or making a movie or anything, but it's good, you know, for any, everybody to see how um, things can be like or how things are possible, you know, to be. But what you do, you know, like keep you down, you know, you have what you have, and you kind of accept that and use it to your best what you need. So that's kind of everything. So you just kind of invite people to come down and hang out. It's sometimes hanging out is more valuable than bringing a donation or. I'm gonna tell you, people, some of the some of the vets that do have some um, PTSD and stuff like that, it's quite opposite. Um, when it's cut, when it's completely empty on base and it's just our routine, sometimes it's hard for them just to get along with certain people. But you have a family that comes by, and they open their hearts. You know, obviously they have family once upon a time in their life. If something happened, God forbid, and you know it did or not. But um, if they did have something happen to them, they kind of click back into that mindset of let me get back to normal. Well, let me show you that this is family. I would never act like that with mine, so I'm not going to do that while he's with his family. Let me. So it kind of helps out both ways. So they straighten up and they also enjoy the company. So how long have you been the co-base commander now? Um, i say for a few weeks now. Okay. But it's uh, really good. Well, I feel good and comfortable in the position. Um, my phone's back on, fully back on with service, so uh, we're planning to get back on our page and kind of update what we need and things that we could use. Maybe more people come out and get involved and stuff like that. So. Okay, so you'll be in charge of doing some of the video updates. You've always seemed to me like a permanent installation here, but like, how, how long have you been? Um, almost about nine months now, so. Okay. So. Awesome. How, how... It's been really great on my part, and I feel really good and comfortable being with the group. So, like I said, they, they kind of, we were pulled from Phoenix, which was a good thing. So we, you know, they kind of offered us to help. I asked them for a handout and they gave it. And you started uh, out up in Phoenix? Yeah. So okay. um, they kind of came across us on 7th Avenue and Camelback. And um, we're down to our last couple bucks or whatever. And I was kind of giving up going through something already previously. And um, we stayed with kind of a guy that was kind of working ahead, me and my girlfriend did. And uh, we just came out of that situation to find that out and confronting the guy and going through the yelling and screaming of all that stuff. So we left that, went to go eat. Uh, she went, she was hungry. I had a couple bucks, like I said. Um, I was mad that I only had that much. And for some reason, she was like, well, let's just go. You know, I'm not really hungry anymore. If you want to eat, you need to get something in your stomach. So we went there and then I see all of Lewis and um, Cody O'Neill and all of them and Jeff Kagan and all of them running into the they were not running, but walking into the McDonald's, checking out people and stuff like that. So I kind of stumbled over there to them and talked to Lewis, told him what was going on. They were like, how old are you? I told him I was um, I was 19 at the time and my girlfriend was 20. And I was like, well, they were like, yeah, you guys are youth. You guys are definitely come along if you, if you need to. So they told us to go to the Camelback Corridors, which was one of our bases that got closed down due to the, the government. That's and, uh, Alpha Base, right? That was Charlie. Oh, okay. In Phoenix. So, um. But um, pretty much yeah, after that we was pretty much it felt like home from there. 
That's all. We're good. We got the Alpha Base Reborn. Alpha Reborn. Um, it was really nice up there. I missed it a lot, but coming here, it was better. I got greater chances for school and stuff like that, so. And work, of course, because right now I probably got like three jobs. <laughs> I just never felt better, so. Yeah. Well, I know I've tried to interview you like the other two times I was down here, but uh, someone to you, you had to go to work and stuff. So people have actually in, in Tucson put you to work. Had you ever been to Tucson prior to this? Um, twice, just kind of passing through, dropping a friend off or coming to pick a friend up. So. Okay. Yeah. And so what kind of what kind of work have you been able to get since you moved down here to Tucson? Um, I've worked with H HMS hardware and metal specialists. Okay. Um, also, I worked with Henry, his older gentleman that has his own business. He hangs doors primarily, but he does a little bit of everything. Okay. Um, and he's wonders, you know, he's, he's known through Rita Ranch and um, Three Points and Oral and stuff like that. So he's a really good guy, he gave me a shot and he can't wind up keeping me because he loves my work. Um, I worked down at Phoenix with Wild West Security. Okay. So, um, and um, it's really nice because um, I got the job due to my best friend, Batman, Tristan, Tristan Knight. So. Tristan. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to interview him. Um, I'm sorry for your loss yeah. with that, with him. Um, Gosh, that's just a shame. We still don't know much of what, what happened, huh? Nothing official. Okay. The memorial party that they had, what was it, just this last Saturday up in Phoenix? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, you, you were you able to attend that? Yeah, I was there. Okay. Yeah. It was really nice. Um, I unfortunately wasn't strong enough not to break down. I did break down with his son, hey. indeed, and all the, all the friends guys around, you know, due to memories we did have. Um, like I say, once again, he's one of the people that helped me get my job that I still got to this day. So, um, met him at Alpha Base, met a lot of good people at Alpha Base, and it's like that what happened to Alpha happened. So, you mentioned how Tristan had uh, been a positive influence on you and your girlfriend's life. Um, is there a story or, or something that you'd like to share uh, uh, concerning Tristan? That old Batman? Well, it's nothing too big, you know, we met him. I was introduced to him to, you know, meeting everybody in the group, of course, being the new one to come to Alpha Base Reborn. And I also wanted to be part of the staff of Alpha Base, which means, you know, not the authority level of saying the word staff, but um, just someone who actually just gets involved and, you know, was able to go along with them. And, you know what I mean? Because I, I wondered and worried just about them just as much as they had the heart to let us come to Alpha Base. So, you know, so. From there, when they did that, it kind of opened up even a bigger door. So, I, I, you know, trust was fully through everyone and stuff like that, of course. And um, from there, they're, what they were already doing, which is stopping little minor crimes, you know, helping out and stuff like that in different areas. Yeah. I just, you know, kind of increased to help them more, you know, just like each person does to help the organization. So it's not just anybody does one thing bigger than the other person. You know, everybody's just like adding on and adding on and adding on to so as a family we grow. Hi, Fred. Hey. We're old. We're old friends a little bit, don't we? We kind of have hung out with you a bit. And a day or two. A day or two, not long. Once in a while. Been there. Not, not often enough. Oh, uh, there we go. <laughs> That's right. good. when you live with Fred, then you get to know Fred. Okay. I tell you what, that's a one good motherfucker. <laughs> that's, us. that's us. That's all three of us. We have the three we have. egos. This is where we go. Where they bring them brush teach. This is where everybody comes to harm reduction. So nobody gets hurt out there. They have to come in here and we settle them down and it's harm reduction. We need to do this, though. And we have, we just have one taken out. We've had a few kids kicked out. Yeah. We had uh, to kick somebody out. <laughs> well, yeah. Sorry. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Because, well, you're they, they don't, When they don't fit in with the group, then we have to let them go. 
Okay. Does, one of those things. Does them not fitting in have to do with like the the addiction or whatever they're no, having trouble? No, no, it just has to do. They have to do it. Personal. Do you have a sense of humor? If you have a sense of humor, you fit in. It's a personality thing. Yeah. Okay, so so it's basically, a thing. the it's whole a tent is supposed to spawn more positive things. More positive feelings, more fun, more joking, more. You know, come alive. You know? <laughs> That's what we do. That's what we do in this tent. This tent right here, everybody comes over to this tent. Everybody comes over and sits down and sits and laughs and jokes. And they do that because because they can't do it out there. Well, they have they to get, get away. They have to get away, so they come over here. Oh, you damn right. They come over what here. What better place? And guess what? And guess what? There is no better laughing. Huh? Anyway, I tell you what, we get half of the people. We had the whole camp over here one night. We had the whole fucking camp was sitting in this tent mm -hmm. laughing like a motherfucker. Okay? And that was a good night. More than one, but that was we've had it more than night. once. Okay. They come, they come. They just, they they just come. They, just they come. come by and just have a good time, huh? They just stop. Yeah. Man, they, no. well, when they want to have a good time, when they want to laugh, when they want to get a smile on their face, they come over oh, here. Oh, okay. So there's no other official function of the harm reduction tent other than just to... Make people happy. Make people happy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's more or less. It's, good. it's, it's a good place. Okay. <laughs> That's what it's all about. But so you don't get pissed off. Well, what? Why? What's behind it? I don't realize the value of in my family. With his audience, how can I get pissed off at my family? It's true. <laughs> Amen, friend. <laughs> <laughs> what we do, Bill? That's the way we do it. It ain't worth it. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying, no, it's not worth it. It's not going to happen. Period. This is my blood. This is my family. No, we're family, man. We don't fucking. No, this is family right here. This is fucking family. Bam. We're, we're like one. Exactly, exactly. We're exactly. Exactly. like one person, but there's three of us. And, well, we're brothers. But here we go, we're brothers. Your brother's connected because you all stay at this camp? No. Well, because we're just, uh, we're just because we're connected. We've been through, we've been through the hard road of life. We know what the hard knocks are. What the fuck is that, Fritz? And we learn from them. What the fuck you And no matter how bad life is, we can always laugh. Oh, we always laugh. Oh, yeah. I am a firm believer. I, I yeah. sometimes let life kick me down a little bit. It doesn't matter. But then I turn life. around and I go, you know, the best thing you can do is <laughs> laugh at life, <laughs> laugh at yourself, <laughs> laugh at everything, everything. That's what because, we do. That's because what we because do. if you don't do that, then what do you have, right? There ain't nothing. Right. Yeah, you had a, an individual, his name was Chris. He came out and he donated some, he, he donated some guitars, huh? Yeah, he did. He donated some guitars, um, a PA system, and um, solar panel, different stuff, all kinds of stuff. Generators, or not generators, but um, amplifiers to power the remotes and stuff like that. 100 watt batteries and lights and food. I had seen the BBC special. You remember about? Or they they the BBC came out and interviewed Lewis. And interviewed um, Alan, oh, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. And then they went back to England and they made it all about Trump and Hillary and racism. Yeah. Now I could care less what your skin color is, I so I don't, I don't even, yeah. I don't even want to, I don't even know that I will use this question or want to ask this question. But it kind of, kind of said that VOP is racism and because of your skin color is why I'm asking you this only and I feel that that's a stupid question in itself because a skin color to me should be irrelevant but what well, do you what, what do you have any did you see any real racism as far as uh, encouraged racism through your experience is a no to racism there's I don't see any type of racism if there was racism going on I would be the first one to hear about it Okay. Because I'm a big person on racism. I don't like it and I don't deal with it very kindly. Okay. Which means I, I know how to tolerate it. You know, of course, if we have someone that's just not there fully or fully functional, 
there um i won't react to it of course because we all know you know we have our boundaries and our respect level so but if it's someone intentionally you know and it's just going on it's a repetitive basis i'm gonna let them know about three times that they you know they have address the, the address the individual directly yeah right i'll address the individual about three times on base and i pick a Continually furthers with that, and the issue doesn't stop. I'll, they'll be escorted off base about probably either 24 hours or 72 hours, depending on their their own decisions. If they want to get loud and verbal, or loud and actually go physical hands on, which means now we have to stop what we're doing, make a scene, pull all of our security members together, and physically remove the person from base because of their own actions. When I've interviewed Lewis, he's like. You know, we don't, we're not concerned with politics and religion and all this other stuff. So it, it makes it, it just kind of perturbs me because I've never seen any of these problems really, unless they've been addressed and taken care of, whatever, that someone would make even that accusation. The only time like we've had have people come up and it's all around and maybe they're high or having their moment coming down from being high off something. So they've i've been called multiple times and we you know and stuff like that and your well and your people are descendants and all oh, this is crazy <laughs> and all this crazy stuff so um i just kind of have to go with it yeah. usually after so long with me i've i've and interesting i've done it for hours at a time like listen to it you know and kind of just let it roll i literally sometimes just like to see how long they're gonna go because, I mean, it's less of a disturbance if we're just letting that person go. If they're not, you know, obviously, if they're not yelling and trying to come on base and be a problem, if they're just sitting up front and they're just mumbling or if they're just talking, I'm not going to just go in. I'm not going to leave them. That's, so, that's probably know. one of the most valuable things that I bet you've learned have to deal with, and that's patience with people who are, you know, being out of line, being aggressive, trying to get your goat. And uh, instead of complimenting their behavior and acting like a jerk like they do, you have to be non-complimentary. You have to keep that patience. So it, was that something that you possessed prior to this? I mean, in yeah, yes and no. I was a hothead when I came to the group first <laughs> initially, but I had my run in, my instance, everybody learns from the mistakes. Yeah. Um, Clash heads a couple times with a couple young guys my age up there. Other than that, it was it's miscellaneous stuff, you know, like little petty arguments. Hey, why are you looking at me, guy? Oh, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. But once I, you know, once we all kind of calmed down up there and we didn't have no problems for a while, we were good and everything was set up and running smoothly. Everybody kind of got along like a family. We all dropped problems and people that had problems pulled it in got them over with you know like hey well i don't know what was going on that day i don't need it cool okay well um yeah but other than that it was cool you said that you, that uh you guys have everything what, what do you mean by that i have a moth to come to set on my chest you got a what a moth a moth a mouse. A oh a mouse yeah. it comes and sleeps on his chest that sleeps on his on your chest while you're I sleeping God, every night every night yeah. Dog, yeah. Dog Dog every night um he's got a pet mouse that automatically would just <laughs> come. he loves fred too he everybody loves chest. fred yeah. oh my he's god he's on his yeah. chest i swear to god i woke up one night and i'm going who the fuck is fred talking to man uh -huh. and i looked over and here he is there's this little mouse on his chest and they're having a conversation. I went, I got to go back to sleep, man. We have to talk. That is some crazy Disney movie kind of crap no, right there, you know. No, that is good. No, that I is know. good, man. I saw it, too. <laughs> you, you, I saw you, the mouse talking to him. Yeah. Well, that's the guy. And because you have a mouse that sleeps with you and, and talks to you, you think you have everything? I know I have everything. <laughs> I'm more good at asking more. Wow. He says, yeah. I do. I got it all. You must be, you, you, that's awesome. No, that's oh, yeah, it, I have a prank. They ain't afraid of me, I ain't afraid of you. And it's a mouse. Yeah, I have a mouse. It's a, it's a cold mouse. And then you have a dog who lives under here, right? Yeah. What's the dog's name? Yeah, but we got Allie right. Yeah. LB. LB. LD. LD, and What's it's a little LD? chihuahua? LT. 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 LT, and it's a little chihuahua. Huh? Yeah. Oh, and it's a mean little fucking dog. Don't you know? Evil, no, nobody's coming. 
Come out here, Tonto. I'll tell you what. Come on, Tonto. This fucker will sleep come. underneath. Tonto. There he is. Oh, there he is. Where are you at? Yeah, baby. I guarantee. Hi. Hi. Okay. He's the best watchdog there is in the world. The best Be watchdog. Girl, Tonto. Come on. Come on. Uh, LT was my dog, but now the commander owns him, and you know he's the owner. You know, but man. She look where she stays. Yeah. She stays oh, under yeah. Fred's bed. <laughs> When I first met you, when I first came around here, you were doing security. And uh, what can you tell me about um, your experience uh, uh, with the security around here uh, at Bravo Base? Um, I think sometimes people don't understand why we have security around here at Bravo Base. And um, sometimes it's not just the area. It's um, certain people that don't understand sometimes when you leave, even though they see it as them taking their own time off, even if it's away from the property or anything like that, it kind of follows them back, it shadows them, because sooner or later they're gonna wanna step back out. And then there's bound to be a moment where someone knows someone some, and then therefore we have to do the protection thing, you know, because then they're, we're liable for them because they're on our property, which means like we try to tell them 24 seven security. So, so security is more of uh, just uh, uh, defusing situations before they actually expand to a problem. Okay. Because yeah. okay. if necessary, we always try to keep TPD on standby of some type of way that way. Because like we're not police officers, so we legally don't like getting involved in things we don't have to. Which means that falls into you know knowing when to get involved in certain things. We don't always get involved in domestic, um, you know, disputes between people. And um, if he hit me, you know, we can't always get involved in that. Even if it is a woman yelling, you know, we can call sometimes to get it checked out. But other than that, we can't really just act upon the first action. I got, I, I, I got taken out to the desert, tied up, fucking tied up in the back of a truck, tied up, fucking dumped in the fucking desert. That's true. From where? Where Where the fuck here? out there, dude. No, I mean, where did they nab you at? That right over here, here, man. At, over at the park? Right no. Here. Oh, at the base? No, yeah. no, at the fucking uh, pineapple. Yeah, we had a friend. We had a friend. We no, got... He pulled me out of the back of the truck, all right? I'm tied up like a mother. Tried to run him over. And then he tried to run. He ran me over, all right? And I, they... walked, I walked out of that fucking place. I walked out. I'll fucking, I, I fucking undid all my shit. They had me fucking tied up like a motherfucker. And I walked, I walked out, and this lady picked me up, and she's just like, "What in the fuck happened to you?" <laughs> wow. She says, "Jesus, look like you just got fucked what, up." What, what are you doing? <laughs> she what took me to the hospital. Over? I was in the hospital. Yeah. Dude, I was in the hospital for uh, like tire marks over his shoulder huh? where they ran along. You're shitting me. Yeah. No. And this one lady, she drove by, she drove by it, and then she pulled around, no. and, she, and she says, what the fuck are you doing out here? And I said, you got beat well, up. I got no, beat I'm up, up. Fuck, like, I'm dirtier than fuck, and I got shit stitches in my back and my head. Yeah. She, she was going, nice enough to just pick you she up. Says, yeah. she, she says, yeah. She says, I'm going to take you to the hospital. And I says, thank you very much. She <laughs> says, how long have you been walking? And I said, about... About six fucking hours now. <laughs> from, from where? She said. And I went, over there. Over there. And she says, you're going the wrong fucking way. I don't know. Well, how long were you in the hospital then? I, uh, Not long enough. Not long enough, huh? Mm-hmm. I had five days. Five days, man. Well, I said, Not long enough. Wow. And I can understand why you need to utilize the police a lot of times. Right. Them, that's what they do, deal with domestic disputes all day. Well, with them, um, right now, they actually bring people from, you know, um, I, I think it's people before sentencing, you know, to get a program or some type of hours, so many hours completed, so they won't get locked up for so long. I believe oh, that. so like um, a, um, when people are ordered to do public service work? It's kind of, it's, it's, I believe it's something like that. So, because I know we've got two or three, a couple, uh, couple people dropped off by TPD themselves and they came by and um, a couple of them worked out, a couple of them didn't. 
So, but um, they asked you to put them to work, though. Well, yeah, well, not access to put them to work, but you know, they get out of jail and coming out of jail, you have different things oh, sometimes even come like out of like jail. a halfway house, almost as if they, yeah. But what well, we do let them, it's the veterans primarily that they keep an eye out for because see, we can't just go mix in convicts, right? With our vets that are ex, you know, they've been through their own past uh, worries and stuff going on, so we, you know, they, they bring specifically the vets that they seem or to think maybe they just going through something or maybe they're just a little too intoxicated or something because we've been too intoxicated what we can do is you know de-escalate the problem calm them down um get them to an iso uh, area on base where they feel comfortable to either talk with one person or a couple people at the same time yeah and um from there you know well what was the problem okay well you know we know they're still going to be obviously raging and f maybe flying well, who knows but they're still getting the problem out of their system rather than coming out here mad from the same way how they what, what got them in the heap of trouble they were already coming from cool thank you i'm glad i can finally sit down with you yeah no it's been run around chase rat city <laughs> <laughs> well hey you're working your butt off you're making you know you're doing an honest living that's that's the best man places like this relieves the stress of the people living under bridges and in tunnels and, and in questionable places, you know, where they shouldn't be. And, and at least they're safe here. Right. No one's going to rob you yeah. in the middle of the right. night. You know, and that's good. You go through dialysis? Yeah, three times a week. Three times a week. Yeah. So yeah. That's, yeah. That, that, that sounds absolutely impossible to get that done in a scenario where you're living under a bridge. Yeah, right. Because, you know... Uh, and that, how long have you been here? Oh, about a year. Okay. Three uh, times a week, dialysis. And, and you know, it was, but the dialysis, dialysis takes the place of my kidneys. Because my kidneys don't work no more. So, without it, I'm dead. You know? Wow. It, it all started with the caterpillar tent here. And it grew from there to 20 tents. That's big. You know, I mean, one at a time, and, you know, people chipped in, and people helped, and there are more and more veterans on the streets, and they keep mining, you know, and, and this helps to, to, well, it helps us veterans that are living on the streets. So that's a good thing. It protects you. That's yeah. one way it helps. How else does it help? Well, shelter. We're out of the cold, you know. And um, a lot of us here, we're, we're uh, like brothers. Brothers and sisters, and we get together. And we have something in common. We're veterans. We're street people. We're, you know, we just get together. And help each other yeah. out. Uh -huh. You know, veterans and street people alike. We all need a place to stay. And this, this helps. And I hope there were many more of them around the country. There's a lot of people need that help. Nice to meet you, William. <laughs> nice to meet you. I, um, you mentioned that you had a message for your daughter? Always. Okay. If your daughter's happening to watch this video, um, what would you, as if you're talking to her. If I was talking to her? Yeah, what would you my say? My little girl, my fucking angel. I miss you, I love you, and I die. I love you to death. You are my angel. You always have been. I love you. Yeah. I'm sure she would want me to ask, how are you doing? Baby, I'm doing fine. And I hope you're doing even better. Because that way, you guess what? I hope you're going to get, see some fireworks, you and Logan, you and your husband, and, and your little baby. And I can detest, I can um, say that William has been a positive person at this camp. And it's just making people laugh and smile and bringing out the best in, in everybody here. Is there anything you wanted to say? 
Love you. Love you too, man.